All right, everyone, welcome back to YouTube. I am really concerned with the way that men, especially men, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of men's coaches um, who, who I do respect. I respect and, and value their opinions and value um, how they're helping men. But the one thing I see is a trend right now within society, and it's predominantly in my opinion because of what we're being conditioned within um, social media and what we're being conditioned within the news channels and everything else is this fear mongering mentality. And more concerning to me is the fear mongering around masculinity. Um, I'm going to get into what I'm talking about as far as like the way I see the fear mongering, but the fear mongering in general is just provoking us to believe that there is an abundance of these things to be afraid of. And if we don't immediately change, like things are going to become so, um, so chaotic that there will be no coming back from it. Guys, th like this to me is, is a huge detriment um, because it takes one, it's, it takes a lot of time for men to, to really accept that things need to change and evolve the way masculinity looks and collectively do this on a large scale. It's not going to happen tomorrow and fear mongering is not going to get us there. And so when we talk about this, a lot of times all it is is either they're prov provoking people to be more anxious, nervous, and angry with society or they're really steering guys away from actually growing and progressing because they're putting such an immediate attack on men to do some to do this massive change that the guys feel uh, they really feel stagnant. They're like, I can't do all that. And instead of doing just one piece of it, they won't do any of it. And then they'll just be the same fucking dude, not fucking growing. And they're going to be the same dude who they were today that they are tomorrow, which to me is, is sad. Like if we really want men to grow, if we're really talking about how do we have this conversation, give real applicable tools on how to integrate this to our lives, we can't be believing tomorrow is the end of the fucking world. And to the men's coaches out there that are doing the fear mongering, guys, really look at your fucking message, man. Like, are you provoking guys to really actually grow and be better? Or are you putting them in a position where a lot of them may not do well with that pressure and they're not going to do fucking anything? And it doesn't matter whether that person's your client or not. If we're all out here trying to be collectively good coaches and help men across the board and they can find whichever flavor they resonate with, we should still have the collective approach of saying, hey guys, like, yeah, we understand the world isn't ending tomorrow. Now, could the world end any fucking day? Yeah, any day of the week it can. A fucking asteroid could hit us. God damn. Like, we can get hit by all kinds of different shit. Like, if someone could just launch a nuke right now, we're all fucking done, right? Like it doesn't matter. Like what, if you want to live in that world, you're never going to feel safe. You're never going to have a life of happiness. You just may as well write your life off as just fucking empty, hollow, sad, isolated, and depressing. Because if you're going to live in that amount of fear, there's no way you're going to have a life of happiness and joy and experiential um, and interactive and social and all of those things because you're just so fearful. So we don't need to be driving fear into men. And this is where I really, I find a lot, and this is something I, I want to preface this. I feel like apparently I, sh I have to, um, I, even though I shouldn't. If, if you guys have been following me or know me, I shouldn't have to preface this, but I will. Protection. I am a huge advocate for protection. Personally, it's part of my version of masculinity that I value. I believe it makes a strong man. Personally, right? That doesn't necessarily, it correlates to every man's version of masculinity because there's a wide range of versions of masculinity. But what I'm saying is that when we are looking at like protection, men that are provoking the fear mongering, you utilize that protection. They utilize the, the, the few incidences that happen around the United States or the world as significant leverage to scare men to do something that either improves the, 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 that coach's business um, or provokes men so much that they, that they are either sitting in anxiety and anger and stress, which is then spiking cortisol and causing all kinds of other hormonal problems within the dude. 
or they're causing them to be stagnant because they're provoking so much change that is outside of this guy's wheelhouse that he won't go do any of it. So the protection model is great. I believe it to be a thing and I believe all men should integrate it. When you know how to protect yourself and your family, it gives you a higher level of confidence just in case that very small percentage of something bad happens. Now that's the other piece to the fear mongering is that they harp, they harp on a lot of this stuff the, the, the very small amount, majority, when you look at this worldwide, okay, it's a small amount of bad things being amplified. Why? Because that's how news get, uh, that's how news outlets get clicks. That's how news outlets get viewers. It doesn't fucking matter, but it's a very small amount. And they're taking this like maybe a, a 3% chance that you're going to have something bad happen in your life and amplifying it like that's the 97% of the everyday life that you're going to live. And it's not. And this is something I've talked about at length, but 97, 98, maybe even 99% of your life, you're not going to have anything that's going to even resemble any form of a major threat in your life. Like that is just the society we fucking live in. We need to understand that. And instead of promoting authenticity with being a good man in this world, a man that you value, a man that you respect, people are just like, go protect, learn to protect. That's what a man does. And it's like, bro, that's not necessarily true. And you can say, you can argue with me all you want, but it's not a common thread, um, even cross genera uh, generationally or cross-culturally in every culture that protection is the epitome of masculinity. Now, it has been valued and probably one of the longer standing values within masculinity, um, I, would, I would agree, but I wouldn't say that it is a constant theme that pervades all masculinity cross-generationally, cross-culturally. That's not, I don't agree to that. But at the end of the day, the point is, while I value it, and while I think there are men out there obviously who do value this, there is a level in which we have to understand that, okay, is it actually very more important right now for you to get your authenticity in line with who you are as a man because you're depressed, because the fact that you have your relationship is failing, because you're financially distressed, because you can't, um, you can't wake up every day feeling like 100% of yourself. Like, is it better to feel that way to get that? Or is it better to be like, okay, all I'm going to do today is figure out how I can learn how to protect, but I'm still going to have all this negative influence psychologically on myself and criticism and things that I'm not working on, my triggers, my traumas, all of that, just to focus on one piece that may potentially high likelihood never going to happen in your life. That's the question we have to ask ourselves. And that's why I, the fear mongering stuff really is starting to get me a little twisted because I'm like, guys, while I support your messages and I do believe strong men have value for protection and, and have learned some skills in that field. If we're constantly provoking men to do that, are we actually provoking men to be that best version of themselves when the 99% of their day is fucked because they can't be a guy who's in alignment with himself? Like that's really where my mind goes. And so when we talk about that, it's okay. It's less about this narrative is less about evolving emotionally and mentally and spiritually. And it's more just about evolving physically, which again, we've talked about and we talked about it, you know, last week in the intellectual prowess and that physical that physical, uh, I don't want to say standard, but the physical expectation is becoming paramount over or is being held more paramount over the emotional evolution of men, the mental evolution of men, the spiritual evolution of men, the intellectual evolution of men. And again, those are the 99%, those are 99% of what our days are compromised of or every day of our life is compromised of. And the 1% or less than 1% chance of something that's going to be detrimental where protection is going to take over precedence of those things is very low. And that is where I'm very sad because of the fact that these guys, again, who I respect and, and do a lot of the, they value a lot of the same values I do, 
They're focusing on one thing, causing men to feel less than because they aren't that. And then adding to the problem that is the, the um, perpetual issue that these men are having, which is their own psychology and their own conversation internally and their own emotional standards. Like all of those things are the things that are being deteriorated and they're compounding that issue. So guys, if you're a guy that is like sitting there and you've been hit by this, I guarantee you, if you're in the self-development field and you follow almost any guy out there, there's somebody that's, you, someone's come across your things like, you need to learn how to protect. You need to learn how to protect. That's it. The world's terrible. Everybody's dying. Everybody's getting hunted down in the streets. Everybody's getting beaten up all the time. If you guys have ran into that, you know what I'm talking about, and it's not necessarily beneficial to you to sit there and think or listen or try to do that as opposed to doing the things that are going to make you a better man 99% of the time. Um, so that is a big piece to this. And then feeling capable is the importance of being able to defend it yourself, right? So like if uh, many of these, not many, I will say some of these men who are promoting the physical protection nature of things are not very good at being able to protect themselves intellectually. They get circles ran around them and they can get manipulated and they can also be made fun of because their intellectual levels are very low. So who's to say that a physical protection is any more in today's society? In today's society, guys, hear me out correctly. In today's society is any more paramount than being intellectually strong. And in that, it's saying, okay, if we can feel capable is, is the importance of being able to defend yourself. Well, if you can defend yourself intellectually, should, don't you feel capable from that? And that's what a lot of the protection conversation is about, is about feeling capable, feeling worthy, being able to look like a man in society. But if you can defend yourself intellectually, if you can protect your family and yourself intellectually in a society that's built around that, because physical, physical harm is not as paramount as what people want you to believe, or physical harm is not as, yeah, is not as, uh, is not as um, common as people want you to believe. If you can defend yourself intellectually, you aren't you on the same standard kind of in the different range? And this is what I'm talking about ranges of masculinity, guys. This is why it becomes very um, Im important for us to understand that there are these expansive ranges of masculinity in which they are all valid. And so if capability and in, in seeing yourself as capable is what allows us to be authentic in our lives and allows you to lo be looked at as some form of protector, for your ecosystem or for yourself, well, then intellect has to be something that you actually prioritize. And a lot of these guys that are talking about it don't have high levels of intellect. They're just like physical and that's it, which is great. Sure, you're gonna be able to defend yourself from you know, physical harm that, that one or less than 1% that, percent that physical harm is going to come up, but the 99% of your life, you're unable to defend yourself. So who's actually more of a man in that scenario? If by standards, that's what they're saying is a man, right? And so this becomes an issue for me. And I want guys to hear it because the fact that I am somebody who, who values protection. I have my whole life. I've been somebody who's protected people my whole life. Since I was a kid, I was raised that way. And then I went to the military. Like I've done that. And I still value that to this day. If, if you talk to my wife, it's something that's very big in me, but I want to address it because I'm just trying to tell you guys that I'm not even trying to push all of that on you guys. If that is a value to you as a man to make you a complete whole rounded man, then you should be put prioritizing that. And I firmly believe that you should have some level of that in your life just so you can feel more capable, to be honest. But at the end of the day, if it's not a value for you, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. And I want guys to know that as well. And it doesn't make you make make it so you aren't reaching some standard as a man, because as, as we've talked about collectively, there's no common thread of standard for masculinity. Again, I will debate that with anybody because the fact that the research doesn't show that. And so the, la the other thing I want to is say um, that if you are following these outdated perceptions or perceptions that were part of a different generation and then skipped a generation and then came back or whatever it is, right? If, if you are, if you are out following outdated perceptions in a society that is evolving, you are going to get left behind. You are not going to be part of that, 
uh, evolution of masculinity in which we just do simply need to evolve. There's no shame in evolving. That doesn't mean masculinity is bad whatsoever. Evolution is simply just optimizing us for the environment. We've talked about that. That's what we're doing right now. We're trying to be optimized for our environment. So if those outdated perceptions are really what are starting to come into your uh, purview and you're starting to feel um, oppressed by that or you're starting to feel inundated with that, just remember that it is a threat to you if, that, if those outdated versions of masculinity are starting to seep into your life. And not only that, for all the guys out there preaching it, just question that. Are you guys doing these outdated perceptions of masculinity that are not allowing men to evolve and that are provoking this fear mongering that are causing men to basically just take inaction? And that is a question that you have for yourself as a coach. Like, are you promoting men to be strong and well-rounded or are you promoting men to be fearful and anxiety ridden and stressed out and lower levels of all kinds of hormonal activity to include testosterone, which makes us fucking men, right? Which the high levels of testosterone, all of that. And the last thing is guys, like I said already, if it fits your version of authenticity for masculinity, fucking do it. It should be prioritized. It should be paramount for you. But if it doesn't, then that is also okay. There's no shame in that. So just evaluate your own authenticity and start to curate that version of masculinity based off that authenticity. And don't let the fear mongering provoke you like it is the end all be all or it is some standard of masculinity that you're missing because it's not guys. It really is not. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really this is a big topic. Um, it's gotten into uh, a lot of my social media recently. And on top of that, it's gotten controversial in social media, which is great because this opens the conversation. But just think about this, guys, and think about where you're going to go with it and how you can leverage this to your own advantage. If you're aware of the fear mongering, it won't impact you as much, right? And if it isn't something you value and there's other things that you do value, just make sure you prioritize them. And if it's something that you think you should know a little bit of, then know a little bit of it, like do those things, but balance this out. Don't let it control your life, guys. All right. See you guys next week.